India is on the move and this can be seen in most parts of the country be it the building of flyovers in every major city in the country big dam for hydropower generation or a network of highways crisscrossing the country most such projects have human costs many of which remain unaccounted for when projects are designed for the most part it is the poor that are affected slum dwellers and small cultivators who happen to live on land that needs to be acquired for the given project displacement of communities is most commonly associated with the building of big dams and reservoirs but some level of displacement also occurs as a result of other projects the marginal widening of a road that passes through a town for example may force a shopkeeper to move into lesser space an industrial unit may be established on land owned by the government but occupied by slum dwellers displacement in such contexts is often not as visible as displacement from a large dam nonetheless there can be serious economic and social consequences of such displacement all development projects need to be aware of the possibilities of such displacement and to work with affected people to design compensatory resettlement and rehabilitation packages certain basic practices are common to good resettlement packages first of all land acquisition needs to be minimized so that the fewest possible people are affected second for a rehabilitation project to have any chance of success it must have the active participation of the affected community third compensation for assets and for relocation must be fair and timely and fourth people's economic livelihoods must be re-established to the extent they are affected by the project the national highway authority of india program exemplifies some of these issues in line with its focus on improving infrastructure the indian government has embarked on an ambitious highway project the golden quadrilateral the objective is to build a series of four lane expressways to link the major cities of the country the issue is that the proposed construction goes through agricultural lands and towns some of the issues that can arise in acquiring land are well illustrated by an example in eastern uttar pradesh project managers organized a meeting with villagers who would potentially be affected by the project one of the outcomes of the meeting was the suggestion that the project engineers consider routing the highway through government owned lands that were on the fringes of the village these were unused by the villagers and hence would result in minimal disturbance to the villagers this simple exchange is illustrative of the basic principles by which problems of displacement associated with infrastructure development can be minimized first an effort must be made to minimize the amount of land that needs to be acquired made possible in this instance by aligning the road such that it bypassed key agricultural lands in the village that such a simple solution could be arrived at is a direct consequence of the project engineers and district administration paying attention to what the villagers were saying this is the second key principle of a good rehabilitation approach local people know more about their own area than do project personnel and may not in fact be hostile to the project by informing people and getting them to share their knowledge of the area there is a possibility of finding options that are less disruptive than options worked out by an engineer who is not from the area taking the interests of these people into consideration can also lead to a better provision of infrastructure services such as the best place to locate a bus stop or the ideal location of a marketplace in situations in which the expansion of a road through an urban area is leading to displacement of pavement using hawkers or even to shopkeepers project managers should think of the establishment of a simple marketplace while this adds somewhat to the costs of the project it has huge potential in creating goodwill towards the project for similar reasons a bus stop could be conveniently located 
to enable shoppers and shopkeepers easy access to such a marketplace. Compensation packages must pay market rates. The savings associated with minimizing the numbers of dislocated people can be used to increase compensation levels to a point where they are in line with market prices. In order to ensure that the affected population is comfortable with the compensation process, it is essential that the compensation rates be made public and people participate in the determination of these rates. In addition, a public grievance committee should be constituted such that people have a fora within which they can air their discontent over proposed compensation packages. Such mechanisms merely ensure that debate takes place in the open and once a settlement has been arrived at, it is harder for both villagers and engineers to backtrack on an agreement. Work is likely to proceed with far greater speed in such an open climate. And finally, where necessary, families need to be economically rehabilitated and not just provided financial compensation for the loss of agricultural land or existing housing. One way of doing this is for project authorities to provide assistance to families to set themselves up in small business or relocate them to an existing or new marketplace. Such a measure is of greater value than merely providing financial compensation since it ensures the individual's long-term capacity to earn a living is not undermined. This was dramatically illustrated by the rehabilitation of the Mariwala or washer community in Bangalore. The Mariwalas used to wash clothes in a village tank. This tank was drained in 1952 on grounds that sewage from a nearby town was being emptied into the tank, in the process creating a health hazard. Over the course of many decades, the Madiwala struggled to find adequate alternative sources of water. By the late 1980s, the municipal corporation sought to take over their area for urban development. In 1990, however, in response to community mobilization, the slum clearance board stepped in to alleviate some of their problems. They built a number of pakka houses for the community and dramatically improved their working conditions, providing them with washing ghats, running water and proper drainage. In return, the Mariwala turned over half their original area to the Municipal Corporation for Urban Development. This cooperation between government and Mariwalas has spurred the community to take on a number of additional projects. A marriage hall was constructed with money pooled by the community. Rent from the hall was used to build a temple and more recently work has started on a ladies hostel. The Mariwala Machideva Trust now awards scholarships to bright students of their community throughout the state of Karnataka. India needs better infrastructure. There is no question about the need for these public goods. But the need for better infrastructure does not mean that people in areas that need to be acquired have to bear extraordinary costs. Involving people in the design and implementation, minimizing the amount of land taken, compensating people fairly, adequately and on time, and arranging whatever facilities are needed for restoring economic livelihoods are basic considerations that help ensure that everybody is better off.